So as I mentioned earlier, we have a very special guest. We're going to go live now to South Africa to Father Michael Lapsley. Michael, how are you doing? You're very welcome. Fine, thank you. And it's good to be with you. It's good to be with Joe. It's good to be with Afri. Um, and I, I think there are many old friends and comrades here that I'd be very happy to be with face to face. And incidentally, um, about two hours ago, I was with Mary Robinson, um, who, of course, has spoken before at Afri events, and she's in Cape Town for the funeral. And we were at a memorial uh, this evening, an event celebrating the life of, of Desmond Tutu. And your ears should have been burning because we were speaking about Afri together just about two hours ago. Good to hear. It's great. And it, it does come to mind that the, the links between Ireland and South Africa, Ireland North and South and South Africa are so strong. And I think these are links that we want to sustain and maintain and continue. So it's great to have you here and hopefully we'll have you here in person before too long. Michael, for those that don't know you or your story, I believe you're originally a New Zealander, um, but can you tell people a little bit about your own backstory and how over the years it came to be associated or you came to be associated with the ANC and in particularly the struggle against apartheid? No, thank you very much. Well, it's, what you're saying is true. I'm a, I'm a Kiwi boy um, by birth. Um, and a uh, Kiwi boy who became a South African, who became a Southern African. I'm still a Southern African, but also uh, an internationalist uh, as well. Um, but I was uh, joined an Anglican religious order in Australia who sent me to South Africa in 1973 after the Soweto uprising. I was expelled from South Africa. I went to live in the mountain kingdom of Lesotho, that tiny country completely surrounded by South Africa. And it was there that I, I joined the African National Congress of South Africa. So I was to spend the next 16 years outside South Africa, first in Lesotho, then in Zimbabwe. And at the same time, I was a pastor, priest, chaplain uh, within the liberation movement. And then, in, um, and of course, it was in Lesotho I first met Desmond Tutu. I was expelled from South Africa in September 76. In late 75, he had become the bishop of Lesotho. And so that's where we met, 1975, and we remained connected all through these years to eternity. Then he was my Archbishop of Cape Town. And then when he was chairperson of the commission, uh, I gave evidence to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, but then taking, just pausing a step, uh, April of 1990, three months after the release of Nelson Mandela, I received a letter bomb in the post from, from the apartheid government. So that's how I lost both my hands. I lost an eye, my eardrums were shattered many other injuries. So of course, I traveled my own journey of healing through the love and prayers of people of goodwill uh, from across the world. And, uh, and then um, I actually, firstly, after I returned to South Africa, I became chaplain to a trauma center for victims of violence and torture uh, under Archbishop um, you know, Tutu. But just to tell a little tidy story, after I was bombed, I went to hospital in Australia. I came back from hospital in Australia to Zimbabwe. I came to my bishop and I said, well, Father, here I am. He said, but you are disabled now. What can you do? I said, I can drive a car. He looked frightened at that prospect of being on the same road as me. Uh, but then I said, I think I can be more of a priest with no hands than I ever was with two hands. Archbishop Tutu said, come and work with me in Cape Town. He said, you know, I've got one priest who's blind. I've got one who's deaf and now one with no hands. Wow. So for one bishop, I was a liability. The other bishop, I was an asset. And that's the kind of person Archbishop Tutu was. He saw that actually I had better qualifications than I have before. And in a way, he's cheered me on the way ever since. Um, and then I realized that not only 23,000 people had a story to tell who went to the Truth Commission, but we all had a story to tell. We'd all been damaged by apartheid. So with a group of friends, I created uh, an institute for healing of memories. 
seeking to heal the wounds of history, seeking to deal with the psychological, emotional, and spiritual wounds of the past. So just as it was obvious for Afri to say, Archbishop Tutu, be our patron. Equally, when we started the Institute, Archbishop, please would you be um, our patron? Um, and incidentally, I was um, last night with a group of Palestinians. I'm glad you mentioned uh, the Palestinian Solidarity Organization in Ireland, because one of the things the Western media is doing at the moment, they're seeking to airbrush out of Archbishop Tutu's history, his profound commitment to the liberation of the Palestinian people. And Archbishop Tutu said when he went, when he went to Palestine, it's worse than, than apartheid. Um, and people are conveniently leaving that part out um, of his history. Where would you yeah, like I me to go from there? I, I, did sorry, notice, I, I did notice that, and I think we are going to return to that theme because I think that one of the, the more striking aspects of his legacy and his memory for me was that he he maintained what some people might call a radical perspective right until the end. But I suppose when we really look at it, it needn't be called radical because it's simply the truth. He campaigned on climate change. He, you know, he campaigned. On, on Palestine and so many other LGBT rights and so many other issues that are at the time perhaps are considered radical, but really they're what we should be doing. Um, but I, I think there's an example of perhaps as leadership climbs up to whatever ladder it might be going up, it, it can often get diluted and become slightly less courageous in its tone. Would you would you agree? He, well, yes, often, but he never became diluted. Exactly, became exactly. Stronger and stronger. And he was a radical in the sense of going to the roots, going to the heart of the matter. And I think in a way, his view was very simple. We are all God's children. We all have equal value. So therefore, of course, he was against racism. Of course, he was for the liberation of his people. But then what did he do next? Ha having to some degree achieved the first step of liberation in South Africa, he champions the rights of women in the church. I know there's a few people in Ireland who, who have Catholic tendencies, um, but... <laughs> The Catholic Church will also start ordaining women one of the days, and they'll follow the example of Archbishop Tutu, because he helped our church move towards ordaining women. So we have bishops who are women in our church. Thanks in large measure to Desmond Tutu. But also you made reference, my brother, to the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and of course, in many circles, he was very unpopular when he popularized the rights of the uh, lesbian, gay, transgender community. Um, but for him, again, it was very simple. In fact, he said, if heaven is homophobic, I don't want to go there. I'd rather go to the other place. And of course, that was very provocative, but it was classic tutu. And then, of course, he wrote another book that said, God is not a Christian. Hello, and imagine the shock in some, some circles for that. Of course, and again, he, he was making the point that all the great religious traditions of the world have wisdom in them. You know? So in South Africa, he was a champion of the interfaith movement. Um, so, so today we had a memorial and there was an imam speaking, there was a Hindu speaking, and in a sense for the Hindus, for the Muslims in our country, Archbishop Tutu is their father as well, you know, yeah. equally. So in a way, he's popularized a vision that as the human family, we cannot live in peace without an interfaith vision. But I think there's something very important that I really want to underline. And that is for him, spirituality and the struggle for justice are two sides of the same coin. He's someone who prayed for hours every day. So we need to understand his commitment to justice came out of this profound spirituality. So while he was acting in the world, he was also praying and meditating and contemplating. And, and actually, it's very remarkable. In this week, 
the world, instead of talking about the next war or the next lot of armaments we're going to make, it's talking about this remarkable human being who had a vision of compassion, kindness, gentleness, and justice with profound spirituality. Who would have thought that the world's media would be focusing this week? So in a way, I think it's almost a gift to him in his death that he's helping us focus on what's really important to, to be as a human being, including, of course, he championed uh, the issues of which you, you, Joe referred to, uh, to climate justice um, as well as something fundamental. And he also had a great commitment to young people. So people, are, some people in South Africa are saying it's all over. The last moral compass in the world is gone. Well, maybe one of the last of his generation. Mm -hmm. There's a huge generation of young people who've got fire in their bellies, who are committed to creating and changing the world, who were inspired and nurtured by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Well, thank you so much, Michael. That was a very fitting uh, tribute uh, to share with us. And I think I'd love to, to hear you some more another time. I'm sure others agree. I see people sharing in the chat there. We hopefully will get you back either in an online event or in person here in Ireland. And um, perhaps we'll, go, we'll repeat this event in person. Is anybody up for that? We'll have a bit of a party as well. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> I'll book my ticket on Monday. Excellent. I think we need a bit of music right. and dancing as well. So mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Michael. I really appreciate you joining us. And uh, I wish you well for the coming days and for the funeral. All the best Saturday. to everybody. Let, let's continue grieving and having gratitude uh, for this remarkable human being. Wish you all well. And let's all work for justice in our place in the ways that we can. And that's how we say, uh, Tutu, we love you by working for justice. That'll make him smile in heaven. Wonderful. Thanks again, Michael. Thank you.